Hey, what is up YouTube? I am recording a small video because, um, you know, I got a bit of an unboxing yesterday. Um, two specific things. I got this right here. This is my J. Kovac uh, Radford with a Mexican G10 blanket. Uh, Mexican G. Carta scale. Um, and I'm going to take it apart today. And in doing so, I'm going to also be using this. I'm going to be flipping the camera around a lot because I wanted to show you guys everything. The disassembly, uh, the new kit. This is the Journey Tool Co. Um, the driver set that he came out with. I was lucky to get on this drop. Um, so let's kind of go over what I used to use. Uh, I'm picking this up. I'll show you some of the kitchen over here, but just try to ignore some of that stuff. Um, so here's how we got it right now. This case can uh, suffice as a um, tray for disassembly as well. Like this is how it comes in, as you can see. So, but you can lift up this uh, part right here, and you can set your knife right there. And there's your there's your workstation. Now, what do I used to use? What did I used to use? What did my setup look like uh, before this? This is how I would disassemble it. Put that to the side. I have these awesome uh, magnet trays. Uh, these are for screws and stuff. Um, mostly I use this one though. Um, I thought I would use this one a lot more, but it turns out I use this one just to set all of the smaller screws and pivot screws and scale screws and stuff. Um, I would use this, take apart my knife right here on the countertop or on my old work table um, when I used to live in an apartment. Um, so I had this. This was my first disassembly set from uh, Benchmade, their little torque set um, with the little hardened uh, hex bits. Comes with two T6, two T8, two T10, and it comes with the driver. And that's what I used to use uh, at first. But then I needed a, a like, uh, if there were free spinning screws, I actually would have to, I actually went out to a, a automotive store to where I bought these two things. And uh, that's how I keep it. Right, keep everything like this. And then uh, one day I went to Hobby Lobby and I got this, a pretty cool hobby tool set. It was uh, $13 at the Hobby Lobby. Really good set, it's done me really good. It has not stripped out any of my screws. Um, the one thing that has stripped out my screws, I'm gonna go get it real quick, pause. Ah. this um, this little work sharp outdoor work sharpener with the uh, bits inside um, the only time I've ever stripped a bit was when using this small t6 one and I don't know if it's because of the quality of the screw I was using or if it was a quality of the bit but this t6 stripped out a, um, uh, a clip screw on one of my knives so anyways there's this I still use it still take it to work and that's mainly for this um, t 10 yeah t10 so that way if i ever have to tighten up a pivot i can do that but i try not to mess with the screws too much on the clip at work i'll come home and do that so anyways what does this thing include this thing is really awesome actually um i don't know the quality of the the bits or anything like that um but it worked for me it has t3 all the way up to t20 in um small increments it's got a couple of Allen keys, which will come in handy for this hoe back because the, the rolling detent and the adjustable detent um, has a very small Allen key. It's got a spanner bit, one small spanner bit. So this is really cool. Um, Flatheads, flatheads have come in handy for sure. Uh, Phillips, and yeah, I mean, yeah, this thing has been really good to me. And it had this, this is why I got it too because of this free spinning, uh, I don't know what you call this, this driver that, that free spins. It, it, it is just nice to have. So this is what I used. I got this from, uh, I had purchased uh, a knife from Blade HQ and I got the kit. Um, there's my, there's my Loctite. It's already starting to run low because what I do is I'll pour the Loctite on a rag and dip the screw in it instead of pouring it straight off onto it. All of that was carried in this bag. So Alyssa, uh, my fiance, she uh, um, 
made a funny joke whenever I had this. Um, so I set everything inside of here and I go put it up in the top shelf of the closet and the kids and herself would know when I was going to start working on a knife because this would be a like wall in the closet. <laughs> um, so now I can condense a lot of that stuff into this set right here, um, which is really cool. And now that I have a little work tray, I don't have to put all of my, um, all, all of the, the, what do you call these? Scales and the blade and everything like that. I don't have to put it directly onto the table. So, um, where's my gunny glide? That's what I'm looking for. Hang on, y'all. Give me just a moment. It's not here. Might be in my. All right, hold on, guys. Do that. <laughs> found it. It's in the wrong drawer. I put it in the wrong drawer. I put it with all my leather slips and stuff. <laughs> um, anyways, cool. So this, um, this Gunny Glide has actually done me really well. I really like it. Whenever I put it on my, um, uh, my Demco 8020.5, it made that thing feel like it was automatic, um, because it runs on bearings. They're small bearings, but still. I did it to a couple of my other knives, um, but, um, I like this Journey Tools one because they give you super syrup lubricants. It's going to be my first time smelling it, but oh yeah, it smells exactly like maple syrup and it's already coming out. So, so how do I usually do, oh yeah, and then I keep uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, for cleaning purposes. I put it on a, a piece of old denim jean I'll pour over, um, but yeah. Anyways, this is really cool. This is what my setup used to look like, but now this is probably what my setup's gonna be for the most part. Um, so yeah, so let's take apart the Jake Hoback Radford. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a good angle for this one, for you guys, but let's see what we can manage. No, I don't like that. I have to kind of just be off to the side. Sorry, you, I had to do a little makeshift stand. So I'll try and walk you guys through it. I'll try and use my left hand to do a lot of the spinning for the pivots and stuff. So I already checked this yesterday. Uh, the whole back takes a T7 on all of the hardware, on the pivot and the two um, scale screws, and as well as the clip. So that's that's a good thing. At least it's not T6. Oh, well. Yeah, 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 that's good. Cool. I'm not going to take the clip off, but I just had to double check. All right, so I'll try and do this left-handed, even though I'm not a lefty. So that comes off loose pretty good. There we go. Oh, this thing just glides. It just spins forever. Runs on bearings. And I like it because it's not a free-spinning pivot. I think it's going to be trapped in there somehow. I don't know if it's like a D-shape or what, but... So yeah, we'll just, oh, by the way, slowly take this apart for a little bit of cleaning and maintenance and so I can add Gunny Glide. Uh, so yeah, there's my pivot. There is no Loctite on the pivot, which is fine because I think they, uh, they make their screws in-house, I believe, and they have really good tolerances. So sometimes if you have a good pivot with good tolerances, you don't need, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so these little bits are magnetic. They're from Weha, Weha bits. And um, the thing about these screws, this is only being held together by three screws, the pivot and these two backspacer screws that go all the way through the back, which is awesome. We like that. My uh, Pena, not my Pena, my Chavez, before I traded it off for this, did the exact same thing. So you can take it apart, which would make easy for scale swaps. If anybody ever made like scales for the Hoback knives, it'd be super easy to do scale swaps on this thing. There we go. 
we are free of the last screw. So this is wanting to fall apart and we're gonna let it. There we go. There's one bearing. Oh, this is cool. All right, I'm gonna go over a lot of the details that I see on this thing. Here's your backspacer and this small little piece right here, which we're gonna be very, very delicate with. This is your lanyard. Um, I guess what, I call it space because it's not a tube, lanyard hole. Um, but yeah, this is where you would tie your lanyard off to. So we'll set this right there. This is the G-Card skill. This is crazy. They actually press fit a stainless steel track in there, which is crazy detailed. You can see how the tracks are running in there. We'll clean up inside of there. But I also think it's really cool that they did this right here. So they inserted another stainless steel piece that's got the PVD coating. Awesome, that is so cool. But um, the reason why they did that, because this is where the um, screws go through. And what is, that's awesome. That is really cool. Some really good attention to detail. All right, I'm just gonna set this. We'll set this on there magnetic tray okay so there's one bearing take off the blade which is really nicely fit around the pivot collar this pivot area the track is really nice and look at how intense the, the detent ramp is you see how that's that's this right here I need something to point it has to work there's a detent ramp right here and that is pretty intense. Cool. So we'll leave this right here for the blade. And then you got your backstop. And there is the Hoback Knives rolling detent ball right here. That's where some of the magic happens on these Hoback Knives. Because it spins freely and you can adjust the tightness. Oh, bearing fell out. And then of course you have that secondary um, track washer on the side of the pivot. So much attention to detail on this thing. So let's clean everything up. Put my bearings right there. Take this pivot off. Hopefully that washer doesn't come out. Is it going to come out? I think. No, that's not chamfer. Pivot came out nice. And we'll leave the uh, backstop there. The Cool. This is really exciting. I'm really excited to do this. So here's what I do. Take this rag and I'll start cleaning everything up. So I got a little burp there. I don't know if denim is better than some of that my, that cloth that people use on YouTube for disassemblies, but this is just what I have available to me. So we'll clean up on the inside of this. Right in here. should be okay there's not a lot of dirt or anything on the g carta on the mexican blanket so we'll do this a little bit the inside is super it's fine the guy that i traded this from he did not use it he said that he was just too scared to get it dirty which i understand this is a very beautiful pretty knife and if you start staining that g carta you know you don't want to ruin it sell value and stuff like that but me i use my knives i try to I do take care of them, but at the same time, CPM 20 CB, he's got that, uh, you can't see it because of the shadows and the way the light's hitting me, but right here it says 20 CB. On the other side, it says Hoback and um, PS23, which stands for Psalms 23, which I think is really cool that he is incorporating his faith into uh, his product, you know, the way I see it. I'm a, I think that's really cool. I stand by it. Let's see. Cool. Just trying to get everything nice and clean. Got the blade clean. We'll go ahead and clean the pivot. Let's get around it a little bit. Because it was pre-lubed. But I don't know what kind of factory lube that they use or anything like that. But I wanted to just put Gunny Glide in there and see if it made a difference. Now we will start 
start from the bottom back up. So I think we're good. Oh, the probably the most important part. My bearings. Get them nice and clean. Oh, this is nice. Sorry, this video is going to run a little long just because I got a lot of stuff out here. But I wanted to show you guys the knife, the disassembly, as well as the Journey Toolco uh, Turris. T-U-R-A-S. I think is how you spell it. So this is really exciting. Uh, now what we'll start by doing is putting the pivot back in. Okay. And this is really hard to get back in. I think it's just because it's pressed in so well. That's why it's not free spinning. Because it is free spinning, but the tolerances are so tight that when you start tightening the pivot, it sucks it in. This is really cool. That's awesome. So now let's open the gunny glide. Because we're gonna put a little bit on that stainless steel washer. Try to slip back out. There's a little dab, both sides, that is fine. Then we will drop a washer, a bearing washer, right in there. That's what I use this for as well. I keep it clamped and I spin the... So this little kit, the orange kit that I was showing you guys at, from Hobby Lobby, that thing works wonders. Um, Obviously, don't over trust it. I know whenever I would have a tight screw, I would switch over to these because I know that these are a little hardened and they're a little bit better quality. I'm not sure of the quality on these orange ones. So if I was coming into a screw that was a little too tight, I'd swap out real quick and use this, uh, the blue Benchmade one. The difference about this one I think I didn't mention is that it's not your, your typical hex bit. These are smaller hex bits. It's not the quarter inch or whatever you call them. Um, these are smaller, so that's why they weren't compatible with my Benchmade um, set right here. Cool. So now, what will we do? Put a little bit on the bearing, on the on the pivot. And then we will put some on the fast response part of the bearing system. Going to clip this back in there. That's nice. That is really nice. But before I do that, I actually okay. So that's okay right there. Wanted to put some on the detent ramp and the detent wall. Make it a little bit smoother. Trace right there. Okay. So that might be a little too much, but that's okay. You, that just right now, I can already feel how smooth it's going to become. All right, what else do I need? Put some lube right here on the blade. Okay, so one thing that I am starting to notice about the uh, the built-in tray, if usually I like lay it right down on the counter, which I'm not going to do right now because I'm holding it in suspension and I'm holding everything together, but I couldn't lay this flat, a full-size knife. I couldn't lay it flat without it like messing up the uh, messing up the position that I'm trying to hold it in a flat position which is cool don't mind once I get my work table back oh dang okay so I'm gonna spin this with my finger then we have this right here this is the G Carter scale I'm putting a little bit of lube in this stainless steel uh, press fit area right here which is awesome. That is so cool how he did that. Jay Kovac, everybody else could take notes from that. Oh, I need a backspacer, don't I? It disappeared on me. So I'm just gonna try and fit that right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this in without the Loctite. I think I like it without Loctite. So I'm just gonna spin it in there. Spacer's trying to come out. Now let's see, which way does this go? It's like this way right here. Oh, I also like this orange 
thing because it comes with its own built-in plastic pick and I use this to pry uh, nu uh, nuisance scales you know with that metal on plastic doesn't damage the metal or scratch it up so I thought that was really cool I'll keep this in here probably from now on um, because that's a, this is a really good tool and then so are these tweezers I'll probably keep those in there and put this in there so yeah yeah I think that's what I'll do that's awesome anyways I'm lolly gagging what I'll do is I'll line these up as close as I can and then I'll try and get the screw to go through screw to go through Set the knife down on the counter. Get this back in line. There we go. There's one, and I'll get the first screw all the way through. And then I will get this. A little bit of a spin, because I can't spin it with my small fingers. Okay, that's it. Do I have this backwards somehow? It feels like I have it in backwards. I do. That's why it's not lining up, huh? <laughs> My error, guys. I should have paid attention to how the backspacer went in a little better, but we're doing okay. Rikuchi. There it is. That's perfect. Now this knife is uh, left hand pocket carry friendly, but I probably won't do that. That's what I was trying to say earlier, that the, uh, they press fit that PVD um, spacer right here. So that way, if you ever wanted to carry this left handed, you have that option and you could carry with confidence as a lefty. I don't like actuating my frame locks with le my left hand just cause I'm not a lefty. So yeah, the backspacer is out of line. The backspacer is out of line right now. So that's what I use this for to get it pushed back to where it needs to go. Awesome. So once I get everything kind of tightened down, I'll come back and like I'll take apart one screw and I'll put a little bit of Loctite in it. There we go. So everything is, is it's back up. It's back up to spec. Nothing is tightened down all the way. Yeah, that action's great. Pivot's loose. I can do to tighten it up a little bit more, but here's what I'll do now. I'll take one of these loose. Tighten the other one. So that way the backspacer stays somewhat in line. And now what I'll do is I'll get this other handy-dandy bandana. Lay it down flat. And I'll get my lock tight. Tray, my Loctite. Out of the bag, because it's almost over. And the reason why is because since I pour it out, a lot of it goes to waste, but I don't like pouring it directly onto the screw. Okay, let's pull it out, grab this. I don't use a lot. That actually might be too much, but we can wipe it off on the other part of the rag, and that's good to go. Backspacer's still in line. You know, I am so used to... Okay. I'm so used to using this one that I actually sometimes stop the spinning uh, feature and use it to torque a little bit better, but I don't know if that works or not. It's just habit. Wow. Cool. And you can see from the back side how deep your screw is, so that's awesome. Am I going to get it too tight? Let's screw this one. Pull it out. There we go. 
little bit of blue loctite. Back in. That looks beautiful. So those two are tightened up pretty good. Now, do I want to loctite the pivot? Let's just get it centered first. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that is just awesome. Beautiful. Let's try something. Let's get one of these small Allen keys and see what size. Just to do a size uh, check on this. Oh, that's nice. So this is an Allen key size 1.3. So let's try this thing out. Right, I'm tightening it down, I think. So it's gonna have a tighter detent. Oh yeah, that's hard. It's a lot tighter for sure. Let's do it. Let's just see what we can do. Yeah, you see how tight that detent is now? <laughs> It's almost impossible to flick out. <laughs> just having fun, guys, experimenting, just so I know myself. Okay. There we go. That's beautiful. Okay, let's check the drop shuddiness. But you have to kind of... It's not going to be your most drop shuddy knife in the whole world. Oops, I hit the counter. <laughs> well, all right, first scratch on the whole back. A little bit of wobble. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten up the pivot just a little bit more, just a touch. And now there's no more wobble. Closes just fine. Let's see what loosening me there. A full turn will do, a half a turn will do, oh, that just makes it. Now it makes it drop shitty. Once you get past the ball. There's, a, there's the bump, there's the ball, and then boom. So tighten it up just a touch, maybe like a quarter turn. Definitely tightened up a little bit. All right, so my headphones just died. So we are transitioning to the speaker on my phone. Go take these out.